flipping a coin takes a lot more time than you'd think. So instead of doing that, we're going to simulate it. And one of the ways we're going to do that is using a random number generator or tables. So today we would most likely use a random number generator in Excel or some other computer program. But way back in the day, before computers, they used to have these books that were just full of random numbers. No joke. So you'd open it up to a random page, read off those random numbers, <clears throat> and that would give you your simulation. So let's say that we want to flip two, or let's say we want to flip three coins. And we want to use the random number table that I have below to simulate the action. And here what we're going to do is that we're going to let the numbers 1 through 4 be heads. And then we're going to let the numbers 5, 6, 7, 8 be tails. Okay? So the um, event that we're interested in is getting tails at least once. So to do the simulation, we're going to do it 10 times instead of 100, just in favor of time. And then we're going to record our data below, and we're going to start with line three of the random number table. So here we're going to start at line three of the random number table, and one through four are heads, and five through eight are tails. So here we are going to start looking, and I'm going to do this in a slightly different color just so it's a little bit easier for me to see. So let's see, we have two six and four. Okay, so when I record those, I'm going to have the numbers two, six, and four. So remember that numbers one through four are going to be heads, and the numbers five through eight are going to be tails. So a two would denote heads, a six would denote tails, and a four would denote heads. So the number of tails that I see is 1, and did the event occur? So remember, I was interested in getting tails at least once, so did that event occur? Yes. Alright, so we're going to keep going through these. Um, I'll do the first couple just so we can follow along, and then um, I will cut the video down so you guys don't have to watch me just write down random numbers. <clears throat> so then the next one we're going to have 2, 7, and 4. So 2, 7, and 4. So 2 would be considered heads. 7, that's a number from 5 through 8, so that would be considered tails. And 4 would be considered heads. So we got 1 tails. Did our event occur? Yes. All right. Now, notice that the next number on the random number generator is 0. But when I define my heads and tails, I said numbers 1 through 4 or 5 through 8. So what we're going to do is that we're going to skip zeros and just write down the next three numbers that apply. So we're going to have 6, 5, and 7. So that's going to be tails, 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 which means that we got three tails. Did our event occur? Yes, it did. Now we're going to look at the next three numbers. So remember, we didn't include 0, so we're going to skip that. So we're going to look at 2, 5, 1. So 2, 5, 1. So that would be heads, tails, heads. We got one tail. Did our event occur? Yes. So we're going to keep doing this until we finish 10 trials. So I'm going to go ahead and clip the video. So at the end, you'll see all of this data, and you can look over it um, on the solutions and make sure that yours match up. All right, so I filled out the table. Now notice that when I was going through the random number generator above, anytime I ran into a 0 or a 9, I just skipped it since our variables were only defined as 1 through 4 or 5 through 8. This would come in handy if instead of looking at just heads or tails, let's say that we we're looking at our friends and we only had five friends and we would label them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then we would skip any numbers that weren't 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, so when we look at our data, here's what we saw is that the empirical data says that out of the 10 trials we did, the event that we saw, which is that we wanted to see tails at least once, we saw that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 times. 
which gives us an empirical probability of 80%. Now, the theoretical probability, remember to find a theoretical probability, what you do is that you write out your sample space and then you look at um, the total sample space in the denominator and then the number of times your event occurred in the numerator. So, theoretically, here are all of our eight options. Heads, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, heads, tails, 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 heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, 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 tails. So here we have eight different possibilities, okay, theoretically, and the number of times that we see tails at least once. is seven out of those eight. So the theoretical probability is seven out of eight, which gives us 0.5%. So here's the deal is that when we compare our empirical to our theoretical, they're off by a little bit. But let's think about this. We only did this trial 10 times. So the amount of times that we could have seen our event is only going to be in tens. So there could have been a 0%, 10%, 20%, etc. So we never actually hit the theoretical percentage unless we did it at least a thousand times. However, for only doing it 10 times, 80% is relatively close to 87.5%.